Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are unboxing and assembling the QYO system. This is a hydroponic LED system that um, is great for growing things on your countertop, inside, all year long. You can grow herbs and small um, peppers and small tomato plants and even strawberry plants and all kinds of things. Anything that stays on the smaller side, you can grow it right inside your own home, on the countertop, fresh food right there anytime you need it. Um, I actually have done a couple of these systems and I love the hydroponic systems they're so fun to have on the counter um, they're so fun to have I grow a lot of lettuce and things like that a lot of greens they're so fun to have right there that I can pick right off the counter and throw into my salad um, today I'm going to be uh, unboxing and assembling this for you guys and I'm going to be planting some basil and some spinach in mine today um, I'd also like to get some little pepper seeds and um, some things like that, some different things that I haven't tried to grow in these yet. I'd like to try those, but not today. Um, so let's get right into this um, system. First, I want to tell you that the company, Qyo, has given us a uh, link in the description below and a coupon code. And the coupon code is only for a very limited time. So if you guys are interested in this system, you want to learn more about it, I would highly recommend clicking on that link, uh, using the discount code if you'd like to purchase it, because that's going to give you guys a discount. Um, so let's get into this system. Um, first thing we have here, we just open it up. I actually, I wanted to say one thing about the box real quick. I actually really like the packaging of this system. Um, on the outside, it says indoor hydroponics grow system, self-sustaining farm for the indoors all year round. Um, this is a 12 pod system. Um, it has two different modes for the LED lights and a 24 hour water pump system. So let's get into that and see a little bit more of what they're talking about here. So first, when you open it, this is what you see. There is a little hydroponics grow system guide. Um, here's a quick setup guide. All right, so let's pull this system out then. Oh. Okay, let's get rid of that. And get rid of that. There was something in that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we're good. So inside the box still were these little straws, which we have determined in other with other grow systems that these straws are actually a staking system. So I can show you more about those in a few minutes. And here are some plant tags. Very nice, okay. So the system itself, first we have this top panel, which is where the LED lights are. So you guys take a look there and see if you guys can see them. There are little tiny LED lights in there. And on the top, they have a few little buttons. Um, let's see, it says, there's the power button, veggie, flower, and then pump. And we'll talk more about what those do and why you would wanna choose those in a minute. And then this is your actual system. So that's what it looks like there. Um, okay, so let's open this up before we start discussing anything else. Okay, there. Um, so first we're gonna lift this little panel off. That's what it looks like. This is the top panel. We're gonna set that aside. And in here, we have a bunch of goodies. So first thing I see are the sponges. So let me get one of these out for you guys to see. These are the little soil cork sponge things. I don't know what you wanna call them, uh, but your seeds, go in that little hole in the top and then these sit down inside a little basket which i'll show you they are right here they sit down a little inside the little basket and that's what's going to hold your plant so we have the soil sponges 
we have the baskets. We have a little measuring thing. I think this might have to do with, um, oops. I think this might have to do with the water level, which is actually really cool. I've never seen this in another system before. So I think this helps you determine what um, the water level is inside your system. So we'll get into that a bit later. And then you have your little plastic domes, which you put over your little seeds until they sprout and become little seedlings. And that just helps make like a little greenhouse around them. So next we have more sponges. This is our power cord right here. Here is um, our A and B plant food um, right there. And these are the things, the nutrients that you need to put into the water of your system to make sure that your plants are getting a lot of good, healthy nutrients. Um, and this is then the little bar that attaches the base of your system to the light and holds it. So that's it in there. Um, right here, this little black box right here with this white wire, this is your pump. Um, your pump helps to aerate the system or aerate the water in the system and also circulate the water um, to keep it from getting stale and stagnant and yucky things like that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to get our system going here is we are going to get our A and B plant food um, going. So these take a few minutes to dissolve and everything like that. So I'm actually going to get these ready now, even though we're not quite ready for them yet. They need to sit a little while. So all you do with these is you take the caps off and there's like little, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's like little pill things in there. Um, and they're each different. Those ones are like little white ones and the other ones are like bigger. Anyway, so you want to fill these up to the top right here, to the top of the bottle, uh, with water and you want to shake them and let them sit until they completely dissolve. So I'm going to do that step first. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let those sit there while we assemble the rest of the system here. So next thing that's going to go on is these, um, this top plate, just like that. Um, before we get to that actually though, I want to show you something because I think this is really cool. So this little thing over here, this little white cup, and it has a red thing on top of it. And this little guy right here that kind of looks like a measuring thing this fits right down over the top here of that. And this is actually a gauge to tell you how full your water system is or how full the water is in your system, which is really, really neat. Um, so obviously there's no water in it right now, so it's gonna be empty, but as you fill the water up, it's gonna go higher and higher. Okay, so next we are going to take our extender arm right here and there are a couple of arrows to help you to see which way um, everything goes. So there's one arrow pointing this way on your extender bar and one point pointing this way on your system. So you just want to match those two arrows up and push it in until it clicks. There's a little tab on the other side. Hold on. There you go. You have to push the tabs in. Um, and then it clicks into place there. And then on top here, there is, can y'all see there's like a little arrow right there. And it is corresponding to the little arrow right there. So we wanna make sure that those two little arrows are pointing at each other. And that one clicks into place as well. Okay, so after we have our system all assembled here, the next step that we want to do is to plug our um, power cord just into the bottom of the machine. Okay, so we're not gonna plug it into the power yet. There's no water in the system and that can be very bad for it to run it without any water in it. So we are just going to plug this bottom cord into the bottom of our system. Now, in full disclosure and honesty with you guys, this is my second time shooting this because I first 
filled the system with water and all the nutrients and then realized that the plug was on the bottom of the system. And there's no way to plug it in <laughs> when that's full of water. Um, yeah, so I dumped all the water out and we are going to refill it here in just a second. But first, make sure you don't make the mistake that I did. Make sure you plug this little guy into the bottom of the system. So let me show you this real quick. The plug is right there in the bottom. So let me see if I can find him. He's right there. And then your cord fits through a little notch in the side of the machine and then just sits perfectly like that. So as you can see, you're gonna wanna do that before you fill it with water, but make sure you don't plug it into any power yet. Okay, so for the second time in this video, <laughs> let's fill this with water. So um, over here in the back corner, there is a little spot that has a gray plug with like a little watering can symbol on it. That is where you're going to fill your system. So we can take this plug off and pour our water into here. Um, and there is a max fill line inside this little reservoir area. But also we're going to be able to watch the water level rise on our little gauge over here. Um, so there is a minimum level down here at the bottom and a maximum level up at the top. I hope you guys can see that. They're like little red lines. Okay, to fill your system, you're going to want to take one liter of water and five liters each of both A and B solution. So our A and B solution are all really well dissolved and I can't hear anything rolling around in, in there anymore. So the top cap of your A and B solution is actually a little measuring cup. So we're going to take and measure five milliliters and put it into our liter of water here. And the same thing with our B solution. Measure five milliliters and put it in. Then we are going to stir this together and then just pour this into your system. Now beware of um, the electrical component of this system. Um, using other hydroponic systems similar to this one, I can tell you that you want to make sure <laughs> that you are not getting water into the electrical components of the system. Um, so make sure that this is staying out of the way. Inevitably, I always end up spilling some water. So I'm going to take a rag and just lay it behind here to try to soap up, soak up any drips that I have. And that's just me being extra cautious. Cause like I said, I have had a few bad experiences with water and electronics and hydroponic systems. <laughs> you want to keep those two things pretty separated. So we're just going to fill this up. And this system takes about four liters of water, I believe. So we're just going to do this four times. Fill up our measuring thing with one liter of water. Mix in our five milliliters of both A and B solution. Mix it up and pour it in. Pretty simple. I would like to note that um, most instruction guides will tell you to use um, filtered water purified, filtered water, whatever that type of thing is. And um, I would say for the majority of people, that's what you need to do. Um, we do not live in town and we have well water here. So I am confident that there are no chemicals or anything like that in our water. Um, but if you do live in town, you are gonna wanna use a purified water that does not have any chlorine and that sort of thing in it. Okay, at, four, or at three liters right there, it is right about the max fill line. So I actually think we're going to stop there. The first time that I filled it up, I filled it to um, with almost four liters. And I think that might have been a little too much. It was kind of over the max fill line on the gauge a little bit. So I think three liters is the best. Um, so let's carefully move this over to the middle so we don't slosh it around. And this is our system. It's all set up now to get growing. Let me show you what we do with these little 
pod thingers. Okay, so these are your baskets that you have. They come just like this. And then these are our sponges. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put a pod inside each one of the holes in top of your system. Like I said, this is a 12 pod system, so that means there are 12 different holes that you can grow things in. Now, if you are growing bigger things, okay, something that gets a little bit bigger, like a smaller, now, I preface this with saying they need to be more dwarf varieties, smaller varieties, you're not going to grow a tomato plant in here, like a regular tomato plant is not gonna be happy in here. You could start seeds in these, which I have done, and um, in other systems similar to this, and that works well, but you're not gonna be able to grow an entire tomato plant in here. There's just not enough space. But you can grow dwarf varieties of things, dwarf varieties of tomatoes and peppers and things like that, which is really fun. And if you are interested in growing something like that, I would not suggest putting something in every hole. Okay, so if you are planning on growing um, some dwarf tomatoes in here, I would say plant one, skip one, plant one, skip one. Um, you're not going to want to pack it full of stuff because there's just not going to be enough room for them to really grow and be happy. So after that, what do I do with these? After we get those baskets in there, we can take our little soil plugs and put those down inside the baskets. Now, when they first come, they are small and dried out, and they won't fit in the baskets very well. They'll look like they're really small compared to the basket. But of course, these will soak up the water. They're like little sponges, and they are going to uh, expand and fit the baskets just right. So, there we go. Now we have all of our little baskets filled with all of our little soil plugs. Okay, next comes our seeds. So today I am planting some basil and some spinach. Um, I absolutely love basil. It's one of, it's probably my favorite herb. Um, that beside rosemary. I really like rosemary as well. But uh, basil does not grow all year around here um, in my zone 6B in Pennsylvania. So I don't get to have basil usually. Um, now it's getting into the summertime now when we can grow basil outside, um, but normally I cannot grow basil throughout the spring, uh, winter, or even fall. Our temperatures just get too cold for basil. They don't like it, it's very unhappy. So I'm going to try to grow myself a whole bunch of basil this year. I'm probably going to start some of these as seed and take them outside. And some of them I'm probably going to leave in here so that I can have fresh basil to cut right from the counter. Cause that just sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Okay, so I actually have quite a bit of spinach outside growing in the garden right now. So I'm only going to do these last three over here with spinach, the rest of them I'm gonna do with basil cause I love it that much. And so I just sprinkled two to three seeds inside each hole of these little um, soil plugs. So little sponges, whatever you wanna call them. So now I'm going to put my basil in there. And depending on what kind of seed you have, you're gonna to wanna to do two to three seeds in each hole. Um, that just helps with germination. Make sure that one of them at least germinates and comes up nice. Um, you may need to thin them out later as they come up. If you have three large plants <laughs> growing out of one tiny little hole, that can be an issue. Um, so you may have to thin them out, which means just cutting out one or two of the plants and making sure that all the plants have enough room to grow and be happy. Okay, so I'm just pushing these soil sponges down. They're all floating to the top, which is fine. But as they start to expand a little bit, they are pushing up to the top and I just pushed them down so that they are in a really good contact with the water. Okay, so there's our seeds planted. So our water is in with all of our A and B nutrients. We put together our system, we put the seeds in it, and now 
it's time to plug it in. So let's see here. Um, oh, one more thing, I forgot. We need our little seed domes. These little plastic covers that I can't get apart are actually like little tiny greenhouses for your seeds. So you're going to place these little plastic covers over each one of your cells that have seeds in them. And what that does is it holds in the moisture and creates a little bit warmer of an environment for your seedlings to sprout in. And then um, as they come up, you wanna take the cover off whenever your seedlings are just about to touch the top of the cover. Um, you don't want the cover on your seedlings touching them because they actually can burn and cause all kinds of issues. I cannot get these things apart. Ah! I'm struggling today. One more. Okay, now they are all covered up and good to go. Let's plug it in and make sure it works. So when you first plug it in, it should beep. Here we go. <laughs> um, and after it beeps, you want to hit the power on button, which is on top of your system. So we're gonna hit the power button and it automatically turns on. You can hear the pump running. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. And the system is automatically on veggie. Um, and the system will run automatically from this point on a 16 hour on and a 10 hour off uh, cycle. It'll also turn on your pump for 30 minutes and then shut it off for 30 minutes 24 seven. Okay, so it'll just keep doing that and it's just a very automatic system. It knows what to do, it's programmed in. Um, the veggie and the flower um, settings that we have on top here run for the same amount of time. The difference is the lighting that it is getting. So for the veggie light, I'd say it's much more of a blue light, much more of like a cool blue light type atmosphere. And the flower light is a much more warmer flower. So whenever you look at these systems and you're reading the instructions, a lot of times they'll say on for 16 hours, off for 10 hours for both settings. And you're like, well, what's the difference? What do I want to run it for? Well, if you're growing things like um, vegetables and herbs and things like that, you're going to want to use the veggie setting. Okay. If you're growing things like flowers and those sorts of things, you're going to want to use the flower setting because they have discovered that certain types of plants grow better with different kinds of LED lighting. And that's all that is. There's also on top a pump um, button. If you want your pump to run 24 seven and not take a break, so it'll run pretty much constantly then you can hit that button and it'll just run all the time. Um, if you want your system to take a break every 30 minutes and then kick back on every 30 minutes, which is the most efficient and uh, I think the best way for it to run because it's getting circulation, but it's not constantly running, um, you can just leave it on its default setting, which is to not push that button at all. Um, if you have any problems with your system, you got the settings messed up, um, you accidentally hit the pump button and didn't mean to, you can always unplug your system and that will reset it. So if you unplug your system, plug it back, wait a few minutes, plug it back in, and then hit the power button again, it'll be completely reset back to its original settings. So you can then choose from there, the veggie or the flower, and go on from there. So that's pretty much it. The only thing left that I wanted to go over was your plant stakes here. Um, as your plants begin to grow, um, they kind of need a little bit of support. They don't have a lot of dirt to root into and be really strong. And so sometimes they get a little floppy. So you can put these little white straws 
into the holes that you will find in top of your system. And those are a staking system and they can help your plants as they grow to not fall into one another or fall over from, oh, fall over the side of the thing. Okay, um, also this is a, uh, a movable LED light. So there's an extending arm on this that can go up pretty tall and can come back down. Now, whenever you are first starting your seedlings, you are going to want that light to be nice and close to them. As your plants begin to grow up, you're gonna to wanna to move that light higher and higher away from them. And if you start seeing like the ends of your plants getting a little crispy or crunchy or kind of burning on the ends, you're gonna to wanna to move your light up. That means that your light is too close to them and they're not happy. So you just need to extend the light up a little bit and they'll be totally fine. Just cut off those parts or whatever and they're gonna be great. Um, one thing that I did want to mention um, about this system that I have not seen with other systems is that they have a lifetime uh, help support, so tech support for you. So if you are struggling with something with your system, maybe you did get water inside the electrical areas. Um, maybe there, you're just having trouble with your lighting. Maybe the lighting is not working properly or maybe you can't figure it out. Maybe you're having issues with um, different things that could go wrong with the growing system itself. There is lifetime tech support. So I think that that's great. I, I really appreciate that personally because if I have any problems, I'm like, who do I call? Who can help me? Um, so I think this is a great little system. I'm excited to grow some things in it and see what it's like, um, see how they grow. I'm really excited for some basil, to be honest with you. I don't have any basil yet out in the garden. So yeah, that's basically it. This is gonna sit here on my counter. Um, everybody that comes into my house always asks me about my hydroponic growing systems that are sitting on my counters just abundant with food and lettuce and all kinds of stuff and it's a really fun conversation piece um not to mention the fact that it's just like fresh and beautiful looking most of the time um so i will be giving you guys update videos on this i will be posting updates on instagram um, so if you'd like to follow me at the mythical mom on instagram um, i like to post in my stories and all kinds of stuff about updates with the systems and how they're doing um, and of course, I'll be posting an update video here on YouTube. Um, I also like to do videos on how to clean these because there is a monthly cleaning that you should be doing on your systems to ensure that they are doing their best and staying healthy. So if you are interested in this system, you like it, you can check it out more. There is a link in the description below for Amazon and we have a coupon code for you guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.